Welcome back to the Board Game Closet Second Studio. My name's Bradley. So, real time, it's January 1st, 2021. And just kind of thinking back on this last year, this time last year, I'd made a goal for myself to play 125 new to me games. Um, that didn't happen, obviously. So, I'm just moving that goal straight over to this year. 125 new to me games. And this, uh, these games here, are my shelf of shame all of them these are ones that i've not played that i some of them i've had a while and half of them i've never even taken out of the shrink wrap so i think this is a perfect opportunity to tell you what they are and uh, why i bought them maybe some first reactions um, that i have of them so let's just start right here this is twilight of the gods the the box is age of revelation and then actually when I got this from my uh, local gaming store, they actually gave me a deal to get these uh, expansions. So this is a card game, um, not a deck builder necessarily, but you do have decks and you, you uh, combat with the other players. And the three expansions are Season of Prophe Prophecy, Season, Season of Epiphany, and Season of Apocalypse. So... What stood out to me in this game, what makes it different than other deck builders, is there's um, aspects of it that you can actually, aspects is the name of the card, and it's actually a resource that you use in the game to play your creatures and, uh, and, and what you do on a turn. Um, the aspect is what pays for it, is what pays for uh, what you want to do on that turn. During your turn, you can actually trade with other players at the table to get what you need. And then apparently there's traps that you can kind of mix in your own aspect so that when someone takes an aspect from you, you can spring that surprise, spring that trap on them. So I like that. Um, the artwork is pretty good too. Um, I just kind of looking on the, on the back here. Um, I don't mind it. I, I think it looks good. But really that free trade... And, and I think you can even force people to trade with you um, on those resources really stuck out to me. And so I'm really looking forward to getting into that and figuring out what that's about. Next on the list is one that you all have probably heard of before, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. So if you don't know what Gloomhaven is, it's a cooperative game where you play through scenarios where um, like in this one in particular you're mercenaries trying to defend yourself make your way through all of these uh, this whole campaign throughout different scenarios so what I like about this one is maybe I don't have a lot of time to get into Gloomhaven full out this is a streamlined version and even the combat has no dice in it whatsoever and so that's really exciting to me and the box is is just heavy it's got so much weight to it um, and even though it comes with all these miniatures you have all of this stuff that it comes with it's actually supposed to only play 30 minutes per player so say you have four players and you have an hour and a half two hours you can make it through um, some of some of this a, a scenario or two and I like that. I, I'm excited to play it. It had a lot of hype, obviously, and that may be why part of the reason I have it too. So I'm excited to get into Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Next one is called One Key. And I actually had not heard of this before, uh, but it was on sale at my, um, I believe I got this on Miniature Market actually online. Um, and what kind of stuck out to me on this is it comes with an app. The app has a timer and background music. And I think at the time, I had just played Sorcerer City. And I really was impressed with the, with the intensity of the time um, it going on in the background. And so I wanted a, more of that. I wanted more of that. And this game it is not like Sorcerer City. The, the gameplay is nowhere similar to it. Um, actually, I like it, again, this is in shrink wrap. So this is just kind of what I'm assuming is the leader actually has a card or a, or a type that the other players need to figure out what it is. And so they have, the players have three minutes to deduce that, to figure it out. And so it's supposed to play really quick. 
It's actually supposed to play up to six players. So I thought that this would be good at in holidays, like Thanksgiving, Christmas, whatever, where everybody can kind of gather around. We can get everyone involved. So this one, um, you know, the, the artwork just on the back of the box is kind of neat. It looks kind of cool. And then being that it plays so quick and then has up to six players really seemed appealing to me. On top of uh, the timer, always seems to add such intensity to gameplay i had to check it out so that is one key so next up is near and far now this is an older game this game's been around a while um but it's new to me i actually just got it this uh this last christmas um i love above and below i really liked megaland and so this is kind of the evolution, the upgraded version of those games where you, uh, like in Gloomhaven, you have several scenarios, several quests that you play through. But instead of cooperative, you, you are more focused on yourself. And each time you come back to the game, you can uh, play with the same character that's kind of upgraded and leveled up uh, throughout the other quests, all building up to this main to this main bad guy this this main goal um you can still like in above and below you can still recruit uh, other people to come along with you and then that allows you to do more bigger and better things now again i've not really got into this it's out of shrink wrap but that's only so i could start reading the rule book and I haven't even made it that far. So um, so just looking at the back, of course being from Red Raven, the artwork's gonna be incredible. But just seeing all the people that you can recruit and then knowing that uh, there's a flip side to the characters so that you can use them in above and below. That's great, that's like a, you're getting extra value there. So in above and below, there's encounters, but there's no map that you play on necessarily where this has a booklet that's full of different maps. And that's awesome, I think there's 11. And the goal is to play on these certain ones, building your way up to in the campaign mode to this 11th map. So that's incredible, 120 plus uh, page storybook, I'm into that. So you can't go wrong, you can't go wrong. New characters, new scenarios, new ways to play above and below essentially, which is a game I already like. So, you know, I'm all in. So, next up, let's get Twilight of the Gods out of the way, is called Ashes, Rise of the Phoenix Born. This is another uh, card game. It's not exactly deck builder because you use, you build a deck beforehand and then use that to battle. And uh, what I, what really caught my eye about this is the artwork seems very cool. It's it's different than a lot of the others that, that I have. And then also there's dice that you use as well. You're supposed to be able to hop into this one pretty quick because it's got preset decks. I'm always into that. I like making my own thing. But sometimes when people come over, like uh, my brother and I are both really into deck builders and uh, and, and card card games. This one may not exactly be expandable, which it might be. It might have expansions, but uh, it comes with preloaded decks, and you can play it in 15 to 30 minutes. So the 15 to 30 minute thing really stuck out for me, and uh, seeing the dice really changes it up. I don't have really any other deck builders or, or card games that deal much in dice. So I thought that would change it up. Normally, I'm not a big dice guy, but I think this is on sale on Miniature Market. I think I bought it at the same time as One Key. Um, and so that's what made it stick out to me. Artwork, dice, 15 to 30 minute playtime. Those are all on the pros, you know, on the pros side for me. So I pulled the trigger, went ahead and got it. This is one that is in shrink wrap, shrink wrap still. So I don't know a lot about it, but uh, those are the kind of the things that stick out to me. Moving on to the next one. Let's actually lay this one down. So this is Epic Mechs, and these are these are of the line of uh, t tiny tiny games. Let me go back. This is Tiny Epic Mechs, and so there's there's other tiny epic games that you can play and you can find. But I love mechs. I I've 
but I remember playing games on, on the PlayStation when I was a kid where you played as mechs. And I've always been into that. And so, really, I don't know anything else about this game except except for I love mechs. I, I think I'm going to love the tiny mechs even more. So even if I don't like the game, um, I'm going to like those meeples. So that was enough for me to get this. I think it was actually on sale at my uh, local gaming store, Gamers Haven, if, if you're local. Um, it's an arena-style game where everybody's against everybody else. I don't know. It, it may not turn out good, but I'm excited to play it. Uh, I, I think it seems really, really great. So, moving on. T that's uh, Tiny Epic Mechs. So, this game I actually bought at the same time as Tiny Epic Mechs. This is called For the Win. So, it's very Hive-esque. And my wife and I, we, we love Hive. And so, this has tile lane mechanism uh, just like Hive does except there's just different um, it's obviously not Hive so there's ninja uh, ninja pirates aliens um, zombies and and I think it's the same thing like the, the monkeys do something else the pirates do this the ninjas do that now to be honest with you the artwork on this thing kind of looks like a generic cereal box but um, I think it was super cheap. It was so it was kind of a, a an impulse impulse buy. It was on sale, and uh, I hope I hope to get some good plays out of it. It's not opened. It's still in the shrink wrap. So I'm I'm excited to get into this one and you know figure out what it is, good or bad. Um, next, this one is maybe the one that I've had the longest out of all these. This is Conquest of Sparrows. And I actually got this for $5 at uh, the Gray Fox Games booth at Gen Con two, three years ago. And it had, I thought at the time that it was a deck builder. Um, if you haven't figured that out, I, I like deck builders. I like cards. And actually, it's more about um, terrain control. Um, so I bought this actually thinking that there was going to be more card play in it. And then I got, and then I actually looked at it, um, after paying $5, I actually looked at it and it's got this, um, terrain control that seems interesting. I mean, Gray Fox games, I like a ton of their stuff. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to playing it, even though it's not, it's not what I, um, what I bought it for, but it's going to play quick. Should be fun. Uh, we'll see. So next up is the Big Book of Madness. Now this game I know came out a long time ago. I know it's not super fresh, but somebody in a local uh, Facebook group, a game board game Facebook group, um, was was selling a whole lot of games. I've played the others that I bought from him, but I haven't got to this one yet. This is a cooperative game where you can uh you are a wizard and you can upgrade them and and learn different spells and you're working your way through trying to piece together uh this big book of madness and and defeat enemies and uh destroy curses so this also has a 60 to 90 minute play time which seems a little heavier than than other games that I might have that are also cooperative also are kind of deck builders so I wanted something that got a little bit deeper, and this looked like at least that it would do that. This also is for two to five players, so um, any more than four, I feel like has opportunity. Sometimes that fifth player, I really want to fit in if I can. And so having a game where I can do that is, of course, great. The artwork seems great. Just looking at the back and the front. Um, I'm, I'm excited to try this one. Like I said, I know this one, it's even got some, it's a little bit of dust on it. I've had it a while. I know it's not new, but I'm excited to play it anyway. So hopefully you'll see, um, a lot of reviews of, of all these coming out soon and I can update you and let you know where I'm at on it. So last but not least is Ascension and this is the Delirium version. Um, I already have three other versions of Ascension. I just am a big fan of, number one, any game 
any card game that I don't have to buy expansions, I don't have to buy booster packs, I can just open the box and we're good to go. Then if you're willing to throw out uh, a game mat or a game board in there, um, it's even better. And and you you can, Ascension games, you can actually mix them together, but in my experience what I've found is it actually deludes the experience and just playing the basic or you know whatever version you have, just playing those outright actually seems to be a better time and go a little bit smoother than mixing all of them together. So in this version, you have a dice that you roll to determine some things, and then you actually can apparently transform um, some of your heroes. And I like Realms Un Unraveled, Ascension's Real Realms Un Unraveled, where you, you can transform different constructs and heroes. So this, being able to transform, I liked. And then having a dice included changes it up. I'm kind of intrigued about that. Now, to be honest, I have uh, Skulls and Sails, Ascension Skulls and Sails. It changes it up completely, where you actually have a boat and different resources that you can use to do different things. And you, there's a crack in that you can, anyway, the theme sounds cool. I wanted it to be cool, but I actually didn't end up liking it that much. So depending on how much Delirium changes it up from original Ascension, I may not like it, but I'm willing to try because I like Ascension that much. Um, of course, the artwork, it seems like it's going to be something different every card, right? So that's, that's ups and downs for me, but I like the gameplay. And I bought this from a, from a store in Florida. My wife and I were on vacation a while back. Um, and and I, I stopped into a store. They had this on the shelf. It actually, one end of it is actually faded um, because it sat in the window. And I thought that was kind of cool. It shouldn't be, I guess, but whatever. It's still got the price tag on it even. Um, and then while I was there, I also bought Ascension's, uh, Ascension Alliance which allows you to play in teams. And so if I, the more people I can get in to play Ascension, the better. So I bought this thinking, hey, if I can turn a four player game into an eight player game with just like a 15 or $20 thing, let's do it. Cause I know I'm already gonna like it. So I bought these at the same time. So I'm gonna count them as one because obviously they are pretty much the same game. So that's 10. That is 10 games that uh, half of them I've not even opened. None of them I know how to play, but I'm excited to learn. I'm excited to get into them, and I'm excited to, you know, hopefully soon get some reviews out to you and let you know exactly how it goes. So if you know anything about these, or maybe you have some tips or hints or thoughts before I even get into it, feel free to comment below. My name's Bradley. Um, thanks for stopping by. See ya.